I'm Matt Kessler of Too Many Records, and I've teamed up with Whatnot to go hit the road and see what amazing vinyl communities this country, maybe even this world, have to offer. We're here right now in my town of Portland, Oregon. We're gonna check out three amazing spots. My store, Too Many Records, Music Millennium, one of the biggest and best stores in town, and the collection of David Wagstaff. Let's go check it out. David Wagstaff is, first and foremost, a music lover. I've had the privilege of getting to know him since opening my store in Portland. Spending years of his life traveling and DJing around Europe and the States, he carries a seemingly endless amount of fascinating stories about playing alongside and bumping elbows with some of the most interesting names in the music world. His engaging and encyclopedic knowledge about a vast array of musical genres and acts makes him a true joy to crate dig with, and you can find him spinning wax in various hotspots throughout Portland to this day. His collection of records is in the tens of thousands at this point, and I was finally able to go explore a fraction of the collection. Hey! What's up, buddy? Welcome. I'm so excited to see Come this collection. Oh my god. The legends. The <laughs> legends are finally being actualized. All here. All right, where do we begin? This is where I've got all my all my jazz, like OG, Impulse, Whoa. Verve, Blue Note. And then this is all my uh, stuff that I used to DJ with and still listen to, like trip hop and like new bossa. It's also my gym. I work out in here. Move my records out. Yeah, we gotta be strong to lift all these records. Exactly. Got, I gotta many, stay in How shape. many records do you think you have total? Not more than 20,000, probably. I've never gotten an absolute accurate 20, count. 20,000? Yeah. They're coming and going, so it's kind of hard to have a completely accurate count. Well, <laughs> there's more outside, right? In the, the there's lounge more area? in the lounge. We'll go Shall take we? a look at it. Absolutely. After you. Yeah, so this is kind of where I've got all my kind of. Day to day. Oh my God. This is my uh, like A, you know, alphabetical. Dude, MoFi Ziggy mm -hmm. Stardust. Yeah, that's my favorite. Is this the first press? Yeah. Where'd you find this? Goodwill bins, bro. Goodwill, dude. And sealed? Yeah. I've been looking I don't, for this for so long. I was the other day. I was debating whether I'd crack it and listen to the to it on vinyl. Have you seen? I've that heard before? it so many times. I've, I saw this concert. <sighs> I gotta go. I gotta go. I would love to see them live because I just feel like it would be such an experience compared to yeah. most shows. Like a really visceral, it unique, it, it takes you somewhere. Experience. It, yeah. They take you to a place. This is sure. criminal. We gotta open this and let's do it. This is criminal. <laughs> we should. This is the original recording. Is this the desirable version? Yeah. Like more so? I think because this is truly the Beatles. Oh, dude. Two of my favorite ladies. Yeah, Got Brandy Carlisle yeah. signed, and Phoebe Bridgers signed. My number one album of the year when it came out. Sorry, I have to show this. You, I didn't even know you had this. This is the first record I pressed on my label. This is not staged. I just saw this. Uh, I thought you would find that. That, 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 that too many records. Look at this. Oh. You can sign it for me. Oh, I will sign it for you. Yeah. <laughs> too many records logo. That's so rad. I love that record, dude. It's, it's amazing. Good. What is the record? You told me there was this record that like you couldn't live without. We were driving to that collection. Do you have it here? Uh oh, Blue Nile. I think when you hear this record, it will change your life. Did um, they inspire anyone modern? Like very uh, clearly, Peter like Gabriel. Peter Gabriel. Okay. So so would not be so oh, without wow. this record. Wow. He called them and said, "Can I come and see how you did that? Would you show me?" And they were like, "Yeah, yeah." Mm -hmm. So they became friends. Um, he became friends with all I've the guys. I've never even seen this in a bin when I was flipping. It's pretty, oh, you it's will pretty hard to not find, find yeah. it. Let's keep. There's so much more. Let's I keep. Let's, let's keep I looking. Let's keep. Let's keep. Uh, let's all keep right. going. What is this? Nick Drake. Remembered for? I've never even seen this before. So this is a very limited edition. I think they did a thousand of this. Wow. Uh, Nick Trick's family, they got hold of some uh, BBC original recordings. He did very few sure. recordings as we all know. They released this 10 inch 
in this box set. It's the only way you can get it. I could have spent hours or realistically days going through Dave's collection, but when two crate diggers get together, sooner or later, you have to scratch that itch. And where better to go than to one of my favorite spots in town, Music Millennium. In 1969, Music Millennium burst onto the Portland record scene, specializing in underground music that you wouldn't find at just any record store. 40 years later, Music Millennium is the oldest record store in the Pacific Northwest and a cornerstone of the North American vinyl community. They carry thousands of new and used titles across all forms of media. So I think you do the same thing as me, but I like to look at just, I don't usually look at the name cards. I, no, I usually I go either. straight for the letters because that's like where you find the, the gems, too. right? Yeah, I just go right to the, the used P. Oh my God, no way. Dude, Tiny Stills, she is a friend of mine. She does like really good pop punk, kind of like singer songwriter stuff. And she played TMR Fest, in, like the festival I threw in LA before I moved to New oh, York. Oh wow, no kidding. We don't want our kids listening to bad Contains words. Contains language that some people may find offensive. I don't. Music Millennium has so many new records and used records, and it's great, no matter what you want. Yeah. I'm not personally looking for new, but I always find good used stuff. I mean, you're probably at a point in your collection where yeah. new records is few and far well, between. I mean, the stuff that I'm looking for is, the shop is perfect for, because it's stuff that people don't know, uh -huh. or maybe they already have. And then, you know, like, I love all that weird, like, Yacht Rock, AOR. Your whole cabinet stuff. of Yacht Rock that you, you yeah. didn't show in the yeah. previous segment? Yeah. We got to chat with some of the staff about their thoughts regarding working at one of the most iconic stores in town and the Portland record scene in general. For the most part, I'd say that the Portland record scene's amazing. You know, beyond Music Millennium, there's a ton of great shops that I'd like to go to. It's one of the best record scenes in the country. I think we probably have more record stores per capita than any other city in the U.S. Kind of like the microbrew culture that happened in this town. There was customers in the store goes, I think I'm gonna start my own record store. And the next thing you knew, you had everybody's records, Crystal Ship, for what it's worth records. All these record stores in town that were competing with each other to try to be the best record stores they possibly could. And they were trying to outdo all the other record stores. So it made for one of the best cities in the United States for a vinyl consumer. What do you think the coolest record is that come through the store that you've seen? The McCartney Lost Tapes. I saw a nail bomb record the other day, point blank, and I was surprised to see it. Well, the artist is Akofa Kosa, and it's this um, sort of like African rock and folk kind of thing. I would say probably May Blitz's first record. That was uh, quite a find. You got like the first Nirvana single came through the door, and those are very, very rare. And without thinking too hard, what's your favorite album of all time? A Larum by Johnny Flynn. Wax Fang's La La Land. We would Mac then play on. Mm, Led Zeppelin IV. Well, my favorite band of all time is the Kinks. Their period from like 65 to 70 especially. Arthur is a great record, and sometimes I say it's my favorite record. Other times, the Kinks are the Village Green Preservation Society. We were also lucky enough to sit down with Terry, the owner of Music Millennium since 1996, and one of the most important figures in the vinyl community at large. You basically helped start Record Store Day. You were like one of the people that led this thing that's like a cultural institution within the vinyl community. You know, I, I sometimes give Garth Brooks that credit. <laughs> Because in 1993, there was four major record distributors in the industry that came out with policies that if you sold new CDs in your store, they weren't going to support you with advertising or merchandising. I wrote this three-page letter and sent it to all the presidents, vice presidents of distributions and labels and stuff, and kind of waged a little war between me and the industry. And then one day, Garth Brooks came out with a press conference that said, I don't want my new record sold in stores that sell UCDs. And within 10 minutes, we pulled the product out of both of our stores and wrote it up for return on all Garth Brooks stuff. 
I did a protest barbecue in the back parking lot and invited the media down and the public down to bring their Garth Brooks posters, vinyl records, VHS tapes, and I was gonna barbecue them on the grill. And the day of that actual barbecue, it looked like there must have been a presidential election out there. There were so many oh media trucks out there. I took it a step farther and I did a tour and I set this protest tour up at nine record stores down I-5 from Bellingham to San Diego. In the ultimate end, we won. Out of this, I found out, oh, you know, record store owners have a lot in common with each other. In 1995, I started this group across the country of non-competitive record stores called the Coalition of Independent Music Stores. And it was made up of stores that were in non-competitive cities. We could make each other stronger by sharing ideas. Out of that, two other coalitions started. And in 2007, the three coalitions got together and went to the industry and said, would you be up for making vinyl on some compelling titles, on release titles, live recordings, and great records that just haven't been in print for years. Mm -hmm. That year, they were granted like 50 releases for this particular day. If you look on a graph, you can see vinyl being here in 2007. You can see the upswing of vinyl has been a constant up since that point. To round out the day, I figured we'd stop by the new kid on the block. My store in North Portland, Too Many Records. Too Many Records began as a YouTube channel in 2015. It was mostly me sharing my love for collecting vinyl, listening to vinyl, and people seemed to dig what I was doing. So in 2019, I was like, why not start a record label? 14 sold out releases, all of them on vinyl. Let's keep the train rolling. Why not open a brick and mortar record shop? So I moved to Portland in 2020 and I was like, this is the spot. They love music, they love vinyl, it's a great community. So here we are at the Too Many Records brick and mortar shop. I've been to a lot of record stores in my day and my favorite ones are the ones that make you feel like you're at home. So with Too Many Records, I wanted to be open air and there's tons of records, but they're all killer, no filler. You got grails on the walls, you have essentials in the bins, and if you really wanna get dirty and dig, we got some beater copies down there that can start your collection off nice. When I was looking for a space for the record store, something really important to me was having an area where local artists could perform. I think there's a lot of value in intimate in-store performances, and I found a spot that has the perfect space. The acoustics are actually amazing. We've had four shows so far, and they've all been fantastic. I come from an online community first, you know, seven years of YouTube. There's a lot of people that are interested in what I'm doing and what I'm selling. But what I do here is I make sure locals get first crack. Over the first three or four weeks, everything stays in store before it goes online. But what I really enjoy doing is actually using Whatnot to do these online auctions where I'm connecting with the community and able to sell really unique records they may not be able to find in their hometown. One of my favorite things about being a store owner is figuring out what genres people in Portland love. Unequivocally, I think the number one seller is classic rock, especially hard rock. Get ACDC in the bins, it's gone. Def Leppard, gone. Scorpions, I can't keep them at all. People also tend to go for jazz. My blue notes, they fly out of the shelves. Funk and soul are huge. And then Brazilian music is something I'm oddly getting known for as well. I happen to get a really cool collection right before opening, so people are always asking, where's my bossa nova? My store is 90% used records, and that's for a very specific reason. The thrill of the hunt. There's no name cards in the bins, they're all just letters. So you go to B, you pull out a record, and you see something you didn't expect when you walked in the door. That's part of the excitement. I love all the cool used rare records that come in. This one is no exception. This is one of the rarest in the store right now. This is a 1967 press of the psychedelic sounds of the 13th floor elevators, arguably, one of the best, if not the best, psychedelic record of all time. You never see these in this good of a condition. I know the right person's gonna just walk in and grab it without thinking. On the other side of the spectrum, I recently got a hip hop collection that had Jay-Z's Unplugged. 
They have a bootleg of this that's also hard to find, but the original one disc pressing, you never see this. I've never seen it at a store in my decade of digging. It's an amazing performance from Jay-Z at the peak of his career, goes for insane money, and I'm super excited to have it in the shop. For me, you'd think the biggest challenge would be taking records home all the time, but when you arguably have too many records, like I do at home, you have a little bit of restraint. The actual biggest challenge for me is pricing. It takes a lot of time and you wanna do it correctly. Making sure you're getting the right pressing at the right price that's competitive and fair for your business. Have some grace for your local record store. They're working hard. That was just a little slice of what Portland has to offer. If you like what you see, there's like a dozen other great stores, all worth your time. The question is though, do you have an awesome store in your town, a giant collection? Leave a comment below because we might be coming there next. Take it easy. Thank you.